Hi folks, Rod Bender here. I've been saltwater fly fishing most of my adult life. I've fished with some of the finest fishermen in the world and some of the best guides available. I've learned an awful lot from these people and I'd like to share some of that information with you. So come on along with me and let's have some fun. Hi folks, Rod Bender here. Today we're going to tie a Marabou Estes, a fly designed by a friend of mine, Ron Whiteley, one of the best fishermen I've ever fished with. This man could catch fish in the Mojave Desert. It's a very simple fly and very, very effective. You can change the fly's pattern by just simply changing its colors to suit whatever waters you're fishing. Today we'll be tying chartreuse and white with a pearl type estes. You can tie it in brown with copper flash. Very, very good striper fly. Very good uh, redfish fly. It, it, uh, it imitates an aquatic worm more than anything else. Also, what I found is a good uh, color combination down here is brown and orange. Works very, very good on, on redfish. So, let's get going. The hook I like to use the most tying this fly is an Eagle Claw SSF 254. I tie it in one knot. I sometimes tie it a little smaller and in size one, but it's a very stout short shank hook. It has a very wide gap to it, a nice big ring eye, easy to get your leader through, and the fact that it's short really, really helps in the fact that it keeps it from the fly from fouling. The tail can't come all the way up and foul around the inside of the bend. So the first thing I do with a fly when I'd start tying is I take the hook and I pinch down the barb. You should pinch down the barb from the front of the hook, not from the side. Pinch it down from the front and you never break the point off the hook. The second thing we always try and do, and this goes for any any time you're tying a fly, the same procedure goes for any hook. There are quite a few hooks out there today that are chemically sharpened, and you couldn't sharpen them any better. So you don't touch those, just bend the barb down. But any hook like this, I will try and see if it'll grab my nail. It's not grabbing all that well. So just a simple touch up on a diamond stone or a small file. A triangular shape. I hold the hook to the side, do that side, turn it around to the other side at the same angle, and then put it point forward and just touch it up like that. Now that thing will grab my, my thumbnail all the time, every time I try. So that's good and sharp. We start with the hook in the vise. Always try and make sure the hook is parallel to the table. It works a lot easier. Um, I do tie this in two variations. I tie it strictly by tying on the materials and the fly will remain just under the surface of the water uh, with a floating line. With a, an intermediate line it will sink to whatever depth you allow the line to sink. But sometimes we like to have this thing bounce the bottom or fish farther down in the water column. If that's what we want to do, then we put a little lead around the hook. It doesn't take a lot, and I try and distribute the lead evenly along the hook. If I bunch it up towards the nose, it's going to act like a jig, and it's going to drop nose first all the time. I want this thing to settle at an even level. So this is 20 thousandths lead. I'm going to start my lead about three quarters of the way back. Have touching wraps almost to the front and then just break it off. Okay. 
Now we start a tying thread. I just slide it back a little bit. Another trick that I use is if I have lead on the hook, a weighted hook or weighted fly, I try and use a distinctive color for the final tie off. None of this thread will show throughout the fly. So it doesn't make any difference that it's red mixing with white or whatever color you're using. It shows a small red tag where you whip finish the fly and finish it off right behind the, behind the eye. And that tells me at a glance when I look in my, in my fly box, if I want a weighted fly, I grab one that has a little red uh, wrap right behind the eye. So I will start that, cut off our tag end. get my lead up there and now I make big spiral turns back and forth over that lead to cinch it down. I'll build up a little bit of a dam right behind it with thread, make a taper and then bring the thread about to where the, the hook barb would be. The beauty of this fly is the fact that it takes such little time to tie. There's only really two basic materials other than the hook. That's the, the marabou that we're going to use for the, for the tail, which imparts a tremendous amount of action in the water. I don't think anything gives you more action in the water than marabou and or rabbit fur. You can lay it right on the bottom and just let it sit there and not impart any action at all, and it's constantly moving with the little uh, currents in the water. So we're going to use two different colors. This is a chartreuse and white marabou estes. So we have our marabou and we have estes, which is really just a, 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 a crystal chenille. Yeah, those of you that are, uh, are uh, versed in, in uh, tying, you've used chenille before. Well, this is really just a basically a, a crystal chenille. You can use a light pink. You can use white. Um, Again, you can tie this fly in all white if you like. It imitates a small white bait fish. Works quite well walking the beaches down here in Florida early in the morning for those snook that are only a foot or two off the beach that, that uh, corral bait right up against the, uh, the sand line. Has a tremendous amount of action. Okay. First thing we're going to do is take our white marabou. I've got two plumes here. I'm going to they have a natural cup to them. I'm going to put them cup to cup so that they're f touching this way and not outwards. And don't be afraid when you when you when you tie a fly, don't be afraid to play with the material, to touch the material, to feel the material. Uh, three quarters of this fly tying thing is all about manipulating the material. It, it's got a mind of its own. wants to go here, wants to go there, and you don't want it there. You have to learn to make it go where you want it. Now, I will keep choking up on this and stroking it back until I get about a hook and a half length of marabou. And I'm going to tie it on right there. That's my tie-in point. And that looks pretty good. Ends don't have to be 100 percent even. And it's a nice little plume. So now I will repinch it with this hand, and I will cut off about that much. Now, this will give me an awful big, heavy base. We really don't want that. There's so many small little fibers here that, that may take up too much space. So pinch extremely hard with the, the, the material hand, the hand you're holding the material in, and take. Your, your middle finger or your, your forefinger if you wish and put it against the pad of your thumb and hold the material between and you have to pinch very hard to hold this and just keep plucking and as you can see I'm, I'm plucking off all this fuzz all this if <laughs> if it were muskrat for, uh, pelt and I was taking it off we'd call it under fur but so what I like to also do with this is I put a little touch of super glue on it. We call it bomb proofing. Bomb proof the fly. 
I'm still holding it right at my tie-in point. Tie-in point is right at the thread and I'm going to keep it on top of the hook. I'm going to pull straight down and hang on to it and make a couple of turns. Now it's not moving. I will work my way up and capture it. Come back to the tie-in point. There we go. Now a little bit of flash. You don't want to use a lot of flash. Uh, a very subtle flash is good. I like this flashable. It, uh, depending on what, how the light hits it, it looks gold, it looks blue, it looks silver, um, it looks opalescent. I'm going to take about, I don't know, I'm not too fussy about it, five or six strands, cut them. If I find about the midway point and, and just ca capture my thread and hold that together, I can pull this straight down and it'll pull that marabou, uh, that flash right down on top of the marabou right where I want it. And then I can go back about a quarter inch, capture it in there, and now I've got a nice little splay. Now don't be afraid to leave your flash a little bit longer than the tail of the fly, but I don't want it sticking out two inches either. So a little bit and I try and and try and feather it a little bit so they're not all the same length. Doesn't look natural. Anyway, there we go. We're ready for our second layer. We do the same thing with our second color. This color can be anything you like. It could be a light blue, whatever you want it to be. The old saying is, and fly tying is, if it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. So we're going to do the same thing with this. I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to this. If you're going to sell your flies and put them on display, then you have to be absolutely perfect. The fish don't really care. Okay, so we're set now for our second piece of material, and that would be our Estes. I, don't, I hate wasting material, so I will take a card like this and just put a slash in it to help hold. and take out enough to get started. Now, instead of cutting a four inch length and finding out I only used two and a half or three inches, wherever I end up, whenever I end up with the fly finished, I just cut it off and I haven't wasted any. You can take some of this off the thread if you like. It doesn't make any difference. I don't waste the time. I just put it on there, get it started, maybe put a touch of super glue on it. I work it back right to where the marabou is tied in, bring my thread to the front. A good habit to get into sometimes is just to put a half hitch in that thread right there so that I can put slack line in it. If something happens, the hook falls out or whatever, I haven't un lost this fly. It's not going to completely unravel on me. Now at this point, if you have a rotary vise, uh, you'll find this much easier. If you don't, um, believe me, it's it's not all that difficult. I, I spent 20 years without a rotary vise and, uh, and did just fine. One thing I, I notice about material, it, again, it, it tends to want to go where you don't want it to go. And when you're trying to work with this material here, this marabou will get in the way. A lot of times bucktail will get it in the way. Uh, these come flat. Both, both of these pieces come flat. Women wear them to put in their hair to hold their hair in place. I wrap it around the shank of my vise and squeeze it till it takes that shape. And what it helps me to do is hold that material back out of the way. That's all. They have a lot of different material holders, but most of them won't hold something like this. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to start rotating my vise and work my SS around one turn, maybe two. Now, this stuff wants to stick straight out. You don't want it to do that. You want it to lay back. So every turn, you just take these two fingers and your thumb, form a little triangle, and 
push back, kind of knead it back. Then you make one turn just in front of the other one. This head, it gives off a fairly good acoustic signal. Fish somewhere in the area that may not see it will feel it with his lateral line in the water and make a final wrap. It wants to be a little unruly. Okay, that's what it wants to do. Take your thread, come behind your material. Always come up behind that. That in, encapsulates the material. It can't unravel anymore. I come around with another turn behind, then another couple of turns in front. That'll that'll hold it. Come in, snip it nice and close. I haven't wasted any material at all, not a quarter inch. Now I can pull this back and get my thread right in front of my fingers and just kind of lay that back. So now it's nice and clean. I put a little more pressure on it. Be careful not to break your thread. You'll, you'll learn through experience how much, you can, how much pressure you can put on any given thread. They're all of different deniers or diameters as brake strengths. You can use this, it's called a Mar Martinelli style uh, whip finisher. I like to use them. They're very quick, very easy. Uh, you'll have to follow the instructions that come with it, but it's basically you lay it right over the top of the line. As you can see, we've formed that same cross we did with a half hitch with our fingers. When you come to the hook shank, you always keep the eye in the middle of this triangle, this triangle right here. The tool will turn by itself. That's the beauty of it. The whole idea is to make four or five granny knots or whip finish turns around the base thread to capture it. Once that's done, you just turn the tool straight up until it falls off the bottom, and then it's still hooked here. You pull down with your left hand till that goes right up against the hook. And then you always want to take your thread and kind of wangle it around a little bit like that while putting some pressure. That really snugs it in. It digs down in the other threads, and then you can cut it off. You have a finished fly. Let's take this off. There's a finished Estes Marabou. Ron Whiteley, I thank you very much. I've caught dozens of species of fish on this fly. It's ex extremely well suited for spotted sea trout down in Florida, ladyfish, redfish, and snook. Uh, it does a wonderful job. All you have to do is get it under there, and the marabou does the rest. It just starts dancing around, and they can't resist it. If you have any questions, give us a, give us a shout, and uh, we'd be glad to answer any questions you have. And remember always, it's just fishing. Don't get too serious. Do it the Rod Bender way. Go out and have some fun.